strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel, Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, jewel lord to give up i'd be a fool you are my all in all seeking you as a precious jewel lord to give up i'd be a fool you are my all in all jesus Sin my cross, my shame, rising again. I bless your name. You are my all in all. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, Lord, to give up, I'll be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Beginning today, my mornings are yours, the hopes that dawn in their light. Beginning today, my evenings and dreams, my gift to you is my life. I will always remember the time you first called me out of my empty sleep. To awaken in me the hope of a new day, the love I wanted to seek. Beginning today, my mornings are yours, the hopes that dawn in their light. Beginning today, my evenings and dreams, my gift to you is my life. Beginning today, my mornings are yours. 
the hopes that dawn in their light beginning to day my evenings and dreams my gift to you is my life my gift to you is my life my gift to you is my life in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. And good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, morning Father. Father. Today is the second Sunday in ordinary time. And today I would like to welcome in a special way both parishes that I serve with. I would like to welcome all those who are watching us from, from the parish of Our Lady Queen of the Universe. And at the same time, I would like to welcome all those who are watching from Our Lady of Sorrows, from St. Peter, from the north of the island. This Mass is being offered for both of those parishes, for both of you. So if you belong to our parish, this, this Mass is offered for you. And we also want to pray for those who are sick among us and those who support us, even at this time, those who, who support the church and the parish. We pray for the benefactors of, of the two parishes as well. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. To God in the highest, and on earth be so people of good will. <clears throat> Glory to God in the highest, and on earth be so people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. Oh God, oh my 
mighty Father. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive a prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth be to people of the will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth be to people of the will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who govern all things both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord said to me, you are my servant Israel, in whom I shall be glorified. I was honored in the eyes of the Lord. My God was my strength. And now the Lord has spoken, he who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, to gather Israel to him. It is not enough for you to be my servant to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back the survivors of Israel. I will make you the light of the nations so that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Sacrifice and offerings, but 
without an open ear. You do not ask for holocaust and victim. Instead, here I am. Lord, here I am. I come to do your will. In the scroll of the book, it stands written that I should do your will. My God, I delight in your law, in the depth of my heart. Lord, here I am. I come to do your will. Your justice reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. The body is not meant for fornication. It is for the Lord and the Lord for the body. God who raised the Lord from the dead will by his power raise us up too. You know surely that your bodies are members making up the body of Christ. Anyone who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Keep away from fornication. All the other sins are committed outside the body. But to fornicate is to sin against your own body. Your body, you know, is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you since you receive him from God. You are not your own property. You have been bought and paid for. That is why you should use your body for the glory of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Your servant is listening. You have the message of eternal life. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, O Lord. As John stood with two of his disciples, Jesus passed. And John stared hard at him and said, Look, there is the Lamb of God. Hearing this, the two disciples followed Jesus. Jesus turned round, saw them following, and said, What do you want? They answered, Rabbi, which means teacher, 
Where do you live? Come and see, he replied. So they went and saw where he lived and stayed with him the rest of that day. It was about the tenth hour. One of the two who became followers of Jesus after hearing what John had said was Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. Early next morning, Andrew met his brother and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which means the Christ. And he took Simon to Jesus. Jesus looked hard at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, meaning rock. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. As John stood with two of his disciples, Jesus passed and John looked at him and said, Look, there is the Lamb of God. Hearing this, the two disciples followed Jesus. And then Jesus turned around, saw them following, and said, What do you want? And they answered, Rabbi, which means teacher, where do you live? Come and see, he said. So they went and saw where he lived and stayed with him for the rest of that day. This is quite a strange dialogue, isn't it? But a very important one. Look, Jesus turned around and said, what do you want? That's a strange question for Jesus. If somebody asked you, what do you want? It can be understood in many different ways. So, what, what a strange question, especially when we know who Jesus is and what his mission was. But very important, when you want to follow Jesus, I mean, it is a very important question to know what do you want from Jesus if you want to follow him. You know, for me, it's quite simple. If we don't want anything from Jesus, we don't follow him. We follow him if we want something, if we need something, and we believe he can give it to us. What do you want? What do you want in general? Jesus was asking. And what do you want from me? What do you want in life? And what do you want from me? And the answer is even more strange if you look at this dialogue, because this dialogue is very interesting. Look, Jesus is asking, what do you want? And they are not answering him. They are asking him in reply, where do you live? This is an unexpected answer. I mean, question answer. But if we move back 2,000 years to Palestine in Israel, it doesn't seem so strange anymore. Let me explain this to you. In Jesus' time, to know somebody, it meant to know his name and his family, his ancestors, his father and his mother and his brothers and sisters, if somebody had brothers and sisters. Home was the place where you live, you work, you rest, you eat, you live at home. So where do you live? This question actually means show us who you are. Let us know you. Show us the things you like. Show us your life actually. Show us who you are, Jesus. And maybe then we will tell you what we want. When we know who you are. Would you honestly say that you know somebody never visiting his home and not knowing the family members, the mother and the father and the grandparents? Would you really say that you know someone if you don't know their family and the place where they live? But today's gospel is not really about that. It starts when John the Baptist stood with two of his disciples and Jesus passed and John 
stared hard at him and said very important words once again, words that we repeat at every Mass until today, until this day. He said, look, there is the Lamb of God. And hearing this, hearing what John said, the two disciples followed him. This is a, a point I would like to make right now. If those disciples didn't hear John, what he said, they would not have followed him. If John was not there, they would not have followed him probably because they would not hear about Jesus. And look, John was the only one who recognized Jesus. There were many other people around. But they didn't know, they were not prophets. They didn't know who Jesus was. So Jesus was passing by, but they didn't know that the Savior of the world is, is just passing them by. They could not recognize him by themselves. If they didn't hear anything, the two disciples, they would not have followed him. Somebody had to, to tell them. Somebody had to reveal who Jesus was to them. So they followed Jesus because they heard John saying, this is the Lamb of God. There's a story I would like to share with you that may help us to see the picture as well. There's a true story that happened in African city where people wanted copies of the New Testament but not because they wanted to read them, but because the Bible paper was great for wrapping and smoking tobacco and others, other things. So when the missionaries discovered this, they reached an agreement, especially with the youth, that they could continue to use the pages of the Bible for their smoking on the condition that they would read each page before they smoke it. Within a few weeks, many of these young people were beginning to ask questions about the pages they had read. Some of them eventually turned to God. God works in strange ways, but we need someone to help us to understand God's work. And you see, I wanted to, to tell you at the very beginning of our Mass that for me, those readings we have today they're about the church, actually. The work of the church, the mission of the church, not the structure, not the building, no. But what the church does for us. Because the church is like John the Baptist pointing out to Christ. The church is like Eli. And we heard about, we didn't hear actually uh, the, this first reading. It's about Eli and Samuel. Eli was the one to point to God for the young man. So if you allow me to share with you that first example picture, uh, first reading picture from Samuel. We have the man who didn't know God, who was living with the, with the priest who knew God. And then God is calling that young man, but he could not recognize the voice of God because he didn't know him yet. He didn't know who is calling him. So he's going back and again and again to his master, to his priest, asking, what do you want? Uh, did you call me? And he says, no. And at some point he tells him, if you hear that voice again, say, speak, Lord, because your servant is listening. Because the, the old priest realized that God is calling the young man by his name. But he didn't know. He needed someone to guide him. And this is the mission of the church I would like to share with you today. This is what we try to do. This is what we do. Why didn't God just come to Samuel, the young man, and say, Samuel, Samuel, it is the Lord your God. 
now listen up. He didn't do that. He was speaking to Samuel in a, in a different way that included the old master, the old priest, to guide him and to help him and to show him the way. Why did God have to speak to Samuel in a voice that could, could be mistaken for Eli's, for his old friend? Because God normally works through the ordinary channels that he establishes. Look, I don't know how you look at the church, but if you are looking for things outside in, in this world, extraordinary things, miracles, things that you don't understand and that you heard about, especially from the, the old times, this is not how God works right now. God works through ordinary things. And the ordinary thing, if I can say that for now, for us, is the church. And the ordinary channels, which are super extraordinary, are the sacraments. For now, this is how God works. That's what Jesus did. He established the church. He's living in his church. The Holy Spirit is working in the church, which is us. So we have those channels. We just have to use them. God can, of course, always go beyond the, the channels that he established. He can find his direct way to you. If God wants, he can do anything. But normally, we have the church to guide us and to lead us and to explain things to us, especially the word of God. And something similar happens uh, in the gospel as well. Andrew and John and the other disciple had followed Andrew and the other disciple had followed John and that was the way of preparing themselves for Christ who was coming. For years they had prayed and fasted and waited for the joy of the Messiah, of meeting him. Yet when they finally came face to face with Messiah, they didn't recognize him. But John the Baptist was the one to recognize him. He knew that was his mission, to point at Jesus from the beginning. His beautiful mission. And we know his story. Again, it took the guidance of their spiritual master, John, for them to recognize the Messiah. This is important. These disciples of John had a divine call to become disciples of Jesus, but they could not discover what divine providence had in store for them until John told them that this is the Lamb of God. Like, this is the Lamb of God. Follow him now. There will always be the need for priests like Eli and prophets like John to point out Christ to us and to help us discern what God is saying to us in our lives as individuals and as, as a people, as, as church. You know, somebody said Christianity is not a do-it-yourself religion. No, we don't make it. We don't set up rules. We don't interpret the, the Bible as we wish. No, no. We need someone to guide us. We need someone to follow. This is the wisdom of the church and not my own wisdom. I am not the one discovering my, my faith and, and creating it. No, I accept faith and I follow it. I sometimes hear people say, oh, I don't like this when church says that. Or, I don't like this commandment. I don't like... It's not about us liking it or not. It's about accepting the faith or denying it. It's not, not up to us to say what we like, what Jesus said, what, what he demanded from his people, what he preached. Not really. It's not politics. We don't say what we like, what we don't like. We just accept the faith or not. 
We follow it or not. We listen to it or not. Christianity is not a do-it-yourself religion. Other religions, some of them are like that. What you believe, you do. What you think, you do. What you understood from the gospel, you preach. It doesn't matter if this is true or not. Not Christianity. Not Catholicism. Do you remember the last example? An Ethiopian who had been on pilgrimage to Jerusalem. He was a eunuch and an officer at the court of the Kandaki, or Queen of Ethiopia. And he was her chief treasurer. I, I believe you remember that story. He was now on his way home, and as he sat in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, go up and join that chariot. So when Philip ran up, he heard him reading Isaiah, the prophet, and asked, do you understand what you are reading? And he replied, how could I, unless I have someone to guide me? So he urged Philip to get in and sit by his side. And today, the practice of spiritual direction has, has, has doing, is doing the same thing. That's what we call spiritual direction in, in, in our faith, in our church. And this is very popular in many, in many parts of the world and is declining in, in, in other parts. And the church is doing that work, that job, if I can use the word. Today, many people expect professional counselors who may or may not share our faith and vision as Christians to fulfill their need of being guided and supported on the way and accompanied. But this is what normally church is doing and the community. We support each other. We accompany each other. We help each other and we are being guided by the leaders. You see, we need people in our life who can help us to find direction, who can guide us, who in the Spirit of God can help us to discern the presence of God and the importance of God's Word in our lives. Like John, like Eli. We need the church leaders, That's, and we need the church itself. That's why I really believe that these readings, indirectly, they, they help us to see the importance of the church. This is why we need the church, if you are looking for, for the reasons. Christianity is not a do-it-yourself religion. We follow the path, and we are helped on that path. That's why we are so happy that our new bishop-elect is coming to us soon, because he was given the mandate to guide us now and to lead us, and to help us. We need the church and her people to help us to recognize Christ among us, and then we can follow him. When somebody helps you to, to find Jesus, like John helped his disciples, it will be easier for, for you to follow him. And then when we follow him, we can go and see where he lives, which means we can get to know him. But everything starts when somebody helps us to do it. And, and for me, that place to be guided and helped and accompanied and, and helped in and every way is the church. So we want to Thank God for his church today and for his guidance that we, we all get through her. Amen. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the 
Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, one of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, and descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us thank our Savior who came into this world that God might be with us. We welcome you with praise. You are the day star, the first fruits from the dead. Let us rise with you to walk in the light of, of Easter. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. Help us on this day of rest to see goodness in all your creatures. Open our eyes and our hearts to your love in the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we meet around your table as your family. Help us to see that our bitterness is forgotten, our discord is resolved, and our sins are forgiven. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all Christian families. May your spirit deepen their unity in faith and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we pray for our parishes, both parishes, for Our Lady Queen of the Universe at Blackrock, and we pray for Our Lady of Sorrows Parish in St. Peter, for God's guidance, blessing, protection, graces, especially at this time. Lord, Hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we want to remember and pray for the sick among us in a special way, for God's presence with them and his blessing. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we ask Mary, our mother, to intercede for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for all the good and the of the Holy Spirit. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory 
of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Neil, our Bishop-elect, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the Lord, 
Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Yes. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. the Lord of sea and sky. I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hands will save. I who may 
the Lord of soul and to reign. I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them. They turn away. I will break their hearts of soul. Give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Only one announcement, really, that I would like to share with you. And this one is about Thursday. On Thursday, we have bank holiday. So our mass will be at 8 a.m. and not at noon on Thursday. We normally have online masses in this church from Monday to Saturday at noon. And Sunday mass, as you probably know, is at 8, and you are, if you are watching it. But this Thursday, Mass will be at 8 because of the bank holiday. And maybe one more thing. If you would like to get all the information from both parishes, from Our Lady Queen and Our Lady of Sorrows, please send us your email addresses so we can send you every week and every time we can send you announcements and notices and all the information that we get from, from the church and from the diocese.
The only thing I should do right now at the end of Mass, our Mass, is to wish you a blessed Sunday and stay close to God and allow Him to guide you and to lead you through anything that is happening. If He is with you, you will be good. You will be fine. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a beautiful Sunday. Same to you, Father. Same to you. Thank you.